Good morning, Moray Rabotai. We are continuing up Masechet Abu Dazaran. We are on Daf Yud Amud Bet. On top of the Amud, seven lines down. Today's Amud is being learned. The Schud Yehoshua Ben Diana, Yad Badriv Kai, Menashe Ben Asi. This Amud is also being learned. The Yudu Nishmat, Sipora Bad Yitzchak. We are amidst an amazing, agadic part of the Masechet describing the all-time famous wonderful relationship that Antoninus and Rebbe had, the Roman Emperor, together with Rabenu Akadosh, Rabbi Yudar Nasi, we mentioned Shnei Geim Bebitrech of Rivka Imenu, of the Nevoah that, he, uh, that she had, of two nations being developed in, in her pregnancy, referring directly to Rabenu Akadosh and Antoninus, the wonderful relationship that they had, and says the Gemara, he would ask his questions even to Rebbe, and he would support the Jewish community generously. Said the Gemara, every day, Kol Yoma Havashada Ledava Pricha, he would send small pieces of, of gold in large sacks of, of um, uh, wheat, and amongst the wheat was all these gold hidden. And this was a way of Antoninus hiddenly supporting, he would say, the, the, the um, emperor's guard, so to speak, to, to take the support to the Jewish community of wheat. And really inside of it was filled with gold. On top of it was, was wheat. And Rebbe says, Amar, Amar lehu, amtiul chitil Rebbe. Bring this chitim, wheat, to Rebbe. Amar le Rebbe, Rebbe would say, Lo I don't need this. It's lituba baruch Hashem. I have a lot, which is actually very interesting. Yeshli Rav is the, the wording of Esav to Yaakov, and here is Esav supporting Yaakov with Kedusha. Over there, Esav wanted to give, you know, Yaakov wanted to give, and Esav said, oh, Yeshli Rav. Here is reverse, because this is the, the, the Olam Tikkun, so to speak. This is the fixing of the relationship, the negative relationship of, of Esav and Yaakov. So here is Mamash, exactly the opposite. Here, Esav is giving to Yaakov, and, ya- and, and Yaakov says, it li rav, you know, yesh li rav. And then um, he says, no, 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 you need it. Amar le Rebbe lo srichna, it li tuva. Amar leheve leman de batrach, de avi le batrai. So I understand that you don't need it, and I'm not going to charge you anything. You don't need to bribe me, but who knows? You know, the turn of events of the next generations, maybe the one coming after you, your son, would need to bribe the one that comes after me. So he should always stash up, and perhaps he will need it in the generations, the years to come. So says the Gemara. But the ati binayahu nifu galayahu. So this is the ones that come from you that will spend the money trying to uh, bribe away the Roman officials that come after me if, if at some point this is not going to be the relationship, the positive relationship is not going to be there, you know how to get away with, or with bribing the officials. So it says the Gemara, how are they in a carta? Now this is the learning relationship that Rebbe and Antoninus had. Antoninus had a me'ara, he had a tunnel, they have a island bete le bet Rebbe. That will go from his house straight to Rebbe's house. Now, there are other Rishimtos for chance, others that they say it's not exactly from his house, but it was from vicinity of, of Antoninus's palace, would go to uh, vicinity of Rebbe's house. And because he, he, he could not, as the emperor, go directly openly in the, out in the open to the house of Rebbe every day that he was there to learn. That would be um, you know, pretty dangerous for Rebbe, and it would be more dangerous even for Antoninus uh, in front of the, the Zikne Romi that we spoke about, the Senate, and so on. So he had to hide his relationship with, with Rebbe in a way that no one really knew about it. Now, uh, aside from that, you have to ask yourselves, Rome is in Italy, it's in Europe. Rebbe lived in Eris Israel. In Sipori, uh, so where exactly, how do you have a tunnel that goes from there to there? So of course, it's not uh, talking about the, the palace of Antoninus in Rome. 
It's talking about, as the Tosfot read over here says, it's talking about um, about 12 miles to 12 mil away from Rebbe's house. It was somewhere up above Teveria, he writes, and actually it's very interesting. The Al Sheikh Hakadosh Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh in his Perush An Shira Shirim in Perak Zayin, he writes that that he saw himself the um, the palace. There was, a, the, there was a city called Romi up north of Eretz Israel. It was not Rome, the country, but it was a perhaps R Roman Empire, you know, trying to impose their control over cities. They had actually, actually a city called Romi in Eretz Israel, up north of Eretz Israel, and it was the palace of Antoninus there. When uh, apparently, when he stayed in Eretz Israel, when he stayed in the region there, he had a palace, and he saw the Petach Me'ara. He had the Me'ara next to it as well. This is what the Al Shecha Kadosh writes. An amazing, amazing thing. It said that Adorot actually brings this um, su support for this in in many ways. So this is to, to answer the obvious question of how you have um, Antoninus in Rome and Rebbe in Eretz Israel. Of course, that would not be the case here is um, a place called Romi in, er in, in Eres Israel that Antoninus perhaps were staying in in Eres Israel he would visit Rebbe every day um, and you know trying to to use his opportunity and his time to learn from Rebbe but it's not that he lived there all of his life it was you know again he was the emperor of Rome and whenever he was there he would take advantage of this um, this opportunity to learn from Rabbeinu Akadosh. So it's very difficult to have that. Actually, there is a Roman empire, emperor in around the time that's called Antoninus, but that is um, the the um, general belief is that that's not the Antoninus that we're talking about. This is King Marcus that w w which you see in his time there was tremendously positive relationship between the Roman Empire and the Jewish community in Eretz Israel, and that makes sense. All the things that we have. Um, we, we have in the Gibara, but it will be very difficult to have, you'll see just in a moment right now, how much the relationship had to be hidden from the Romans. Um, it, was, it was literally dangerous for, for Antoninus, and we saw before as well, you would think that this is Rebbe trying to hide and not answer him. You remember when we spoke about um, Rebbe hinting the answers, acting the answers, not saying the words, and it says, Rashi explained the, 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 the reason is because it, was, it would be dangerous for Antoninos. You know, there would be the, the Romans would bother him if they would see the, re, the positive relationship he had with one of the subservient communities under their control. That would be not good for Antonino. So, so therefore, most definitely, you would not find anything um, specific in the in the writings of the historians on the Roman side. That's for sure not. So it says, and, and you'll see more of that just in a moment. It says the Gemara. Koryoma have a mighty tre avdi. He would travel with, of course, two guards every day, and he would have to get rid of them, right? You know, if I tell you, I have to kill you. So that that exactly is the, sto the story of Antoninos, because he he would go with these two guards for for his safety. He would not travel alone, but he had to have two of them because uh, one would be dangerous to have, as you'll see. Says the Gemara, Chad Katle Ababa de Berebi. He would go with two of them. Now, you'll see soon in the Gemara, the way it would work is he would go through the tunnel with both of them. One of them he would leave by the end of the tunnel next to Rebbe's house, but he didn't know where he was going, right? So he would stay there. It's not, it's not dangerous to, to leave him there because he has no clue still where Antoninus is. And he's waiting for him. As, 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 as far as uh, he knows, it's just a tiul. It's just uh, going on a, on, a, uh, on a stroll. But he would walk with one of them to Rebbe's house. But now this guy already is, um, you know, is a danger because he knows that he's, he went walking to Rebbe's house. So he would kill the second one first in, by, the, by the house of Rebbe before he entered. And then he would learn whatever, he, whatever spending time he had, he learned from Rebbe and so on, which we'll see. Then he would come back, pick up this, the, the first guard, and would go through the tunnel. And when he got to his palace, he would kill the second one. So that's the, every time that he, he went there, he had to pay um, 
you know, it was probably the life was cheap back then. But uh, he had he had he had to take the life of two people in order to to be able to learn with Rebbe. So it says the Gemara, Chat Katle Ababa de Bete. He would one of them he had to to, to kill Ababa de Berebi, and the other one he would pick up and go back home. Ababa de Bete would would kill him before his um, entering back to the palace. Because again, if they would speak, his life would be in jeopardy. And therefore, it would be saving his own life, basically. Amale. Additionally, he told Rebbe, says, when I come, nobody should be here. No one should see us together because, again, it will jeopardize my position. So says the Gemara, one day he comes, he comes in, they have a meeting, Scheduled, and he comes. He sees Rabbi Chaim is sitting there learning with Rabbi, and he's like, "What? I told you no one should be here." Didn't I tell you, Rabbi, that when I come, no one should be here? No human being should be here. No living soul should be here. So Rabbi answered him amazingly. He said, "Let them bar inish. This, this is not a human being. This is like a malach. So you don't have to be worried." So Amale, so he said he wanted to test him to see what, what, who, who is this person. Amale, Emalahu the after the Gani Ababa the Kaim Eveleti. So he wanted to test him. He says to Rabbi Chayyim he says, "Can you please go wake up the 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 guard, the guard that I have by the door and tell him to come in?" Now the guy is dead, right? He just killed him two minutes ago. So Azal, Rabbi Chayyim Bar Chama. Rechayim Bar Chama goes, this is the guy, the guy is choked, he's dead. No pulse, right? Ashkeche, they have a katil, he finds him dead. Amar, hechi avid. So he tells him, what, what, what am I going to do? I ezil vemale de katil, if I go in and tell him that he's not waking up, he's dead. En veshivin ala kalkala. The halakha is, you don't give bad news when it's not necessary, right? You don't want to be a, a, a bearer of bad news. En meshivi nala kalkala. Ash bekeve izil, if I leave him and go, then that's not derech eretz to the king. Ka mezalzel, la bebalchuta. Then I'm, I'm mezalzel to the kavod of the king. Can't do that. You can't do this and you can't do that. What am I going to do? And again, all of this is the cheshbon of Antoninus. We want to know what, what the guy is going to do. Rabbi Bar Chama resurrected this guy from the dead. Veshadre. Again, this is a, a belief based on this Gemara that any person's name that's mentioned in the Gemara could, could have done Tchiyat So it says the Gemara, the guy walks in from the dead, the guard, standing in front of Antoninus and Rebbe, and Antoninus had to kill him a second time now. But uh, he says to Rebbe, he says, look. Amar, yedana zuti de'it bechu mechayemitim. I know that the smallest guy amongst you guys of the Tanaim could be mechayemitim. But at the end of the day, mihu ba'itna da'atina lo nishkach inishkabach. Well, please, don't do this again. When I come here, no living soul should be around. This, this is too sensitive for me, jeopardizes my position. Don't do it. Amazing. Kol Yoma have a meshamesh le Rebbe. Antoninus had such kavod for Rebbe. He would be meshamesh. He would, Gibara says in Masechet Brachot, Dav Zayin, says, Gadol shimusho yoter milimudo. Shim, there is, you know, we always say, Talmud Torah keneget kulam. The greatest thing is Talmud Torah. Is there anything greater than Talmud Torah? So Gibara says, yes. Shimush Talmidei Chachamim, serving, being around, living with the Talmidei Chacham is even greater than learning Torah. That's what I love Zayin. So he was Meshamesh Rabbeinu HaKadosh. He would be machile, he would bring food for him, prepare food for him, he would pour, pour drinks for him, right? Get him a cup of water, whatever it is that he needed. Ki havabai lemesach lepuria. When he wanted, when Rebbe was tired, he wanted to lay on, 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 on the bed. The beds were a lot higher. So Antoninus would go on four on the ground to make a stepping thing for, for Rebbe to go on, on the bed. Can you imagine? And Rebbe said, I'm not doing it. 
This I'm not gonna that's Zilzul to the to the Melech. You're you're a Melech, you're a king at the end of the day. Our Gokin Kame Puria, Amale Sak Ilavai would say, Step on me and go. And Rebbe would answer, says, Love Orach Ara. That's not their Eretz. You are the carrier of the, the status of a king. Whether you're a king of Esav, it doesn't make a difference. Just like Moshe Rabbeinu was taught by Akash Barucho to respect Paro, even though that he was inflicting him, he was supposed to die, and he was not a Melech Tzadik, still, you have to have Kavod HaMelech. It's the status of the Malchut that you have to have respect for. Therefore, he said, I'm not doing this. This is, not, this is too much of a zilzul, even though that you want to do this. This is a very, very much a reminiscent of the Gemara in Mazachat Kiddushin, with the Sugav, Kibu Davaim, and so on, that uh, you find Rishu's mother wanted to, to, wash, um, to wash his, uh, his feet and, and, and drink the water. So much kavod for Torah, he wouldn't let it. He will let it, and she went complaining the bit midrash. What kind of kibud avayim is this, right? And so on. So he wanted to to respect Rebbe. Rebbe said, "This is this is already disrespect to the malchut. You cannot do it." First wide line says the Gemara. Amar Rebbe Rebbe rejected his service of, of wanting to to step on him. And Antonina's answer says, "Mi esi many masat tachdecha leolam haba." I wish, he says, I wish I would be a doormat in front, in, under your feet in Olam Abba. Amade, and he asked him, he said, Atina Alma Dati, would I have Olam Abba? This is Antoninos asking Rebbe, he said, would I have Olam Abba? And Amade in. Rebbe tells him, yes, of course. Amade, <laughs> Antoninos was a Tamil Hakam, he says, wait a second, how can you say that I have Olam Abba? It says, the Pasuk says, Lo yesarid le bet esav. There will be no remnants of bet esav over up there in Olam Abba. The meaning, how was his dashing says, Lo yesarid means in Olam Ahmed, there will be no sarid le bet esav. Says Rebbe, he says, no. Le bet esav means, Ose mase esav. Somebody that acts like esav, there will be not, nothing. Ose mase esav. But you're not Ose Maasesav. And as we have explained before, he actually not only was not Ose Maasesav, very much so he was a tikkun of Esav, the relationship of Esav and Yaakov that went sour. This was exactly the tikkun. Again, if the time allows, at some point we'll, we'll spend time the details. One of them we spoke about today. But there's so many elements of the relationship that was a reversal of uh, what went wrong with Esav and Yaakov, that you have over here. So says the Gemara, Tani Namihachi, we also learned this in Brayta. Lo yesarit the Bet Esav, when the Pasuk says there will be no remnants for Bet Esav, yachol lechol, can it be for everyone that there is no, no one from Bet Esav that has, has Olam Abba? Says the Gemara, Tamud Lomar, le Bet Esav be'osem ma'ase Esav. When he says le Bet Esav, the household of Esav is connecting you with the personality, the issue of Esav, means when you act like Esav, that would be no hope for it. But if you're not Osema Esav, if you're not acting like Esav, then of course you have Olam Haba. So says the Gemara, Amalev HaKetiv, Shamae do Malcheha Vechonesieha, that the, the Shama is a language of destruction and desolation, that um, so which is also a, a, a negative pasuk about the kings and the, the top officials of Romi, of, of Esav. So says the Gemara, Amale Malcheha velo kol Malcheha. It doesn't say, all of its melachim. It doesn't say all of the kings. And says the Gemara, kol nesieha velo kol sareha. Because the pasuk, the way it's written, leaves room for this um, diuk, this, this, that drasha that the Gemara gives. The pasuk says, shama edom melacheha vechol nesieha. The kings and all of the nesim. Why doesn't it say kol malcheha? 
It's coming to teach you that there are some of the Melachim of Edom that actually have Chelek Lolam Abba. And he says, Kol Lesi'eha Velo Kol Sareha. Now, Sareha means Roman officials. And the Gemara is going to actually bring a story from uh, one of them that actually has tremendous Chelek Lolam Abba, as we will see in just a moment. So he answered, Antoninus, he said, look, it doesn't, the pasuk that you bring talks about general, general speaking, the, the kings of Esav, but it's not talking about all of the kings of Esav. You are um, a completely different breed. Tanya Nami Hachi, we learned this also in Brita. The same pasuk. Melacheha velo kol melacheha, kol nesieha velo kol sareha. So what he answered him, what Rebbe answered Antoninus, is actually a brighta. He didn't make up the answer to, to just make Antoninus feel good, but this is actually a drasha in the brighta that talks about goyim who are considered chasideh umot haolam, considered tzadikim, and they will have chelek lolam haba um, in a major way. So says the Gemara, now we have to speak about this at some point. Uh, when we say "chelak lolam haba," Kol Israel yeshlam chelak lolam haba. There are some people in Israel that are excluded from chelak lolam haba. And when we talk about Hasidim umot haolam having olam haba, is it the same type of olam haba? Is it different type of olam haba? Is something that we will focus on. Bezat Hashem in, in explaining the agadic parts over here. So, and we're going to have this actually Gemara come up again later on in in the Zayin, in Masechet Abu Zara as well, very similar Gemara to, um, to, to the Ketiyah Shalom that we're going to discuss right now. So says the Gemara, Prat Lektiyah Bar Shalom. This that some of the Roman officials will have Chelek Lolam Abba is coming to exclude Ketiyah Bar Shalom. Ketiyah Bar Shalom will have Chelek Lolam Abba. Who is Ketiyah Bar Shalom? Says the Gemara, Ketiyah Bar Shalom, my who, who, who was it? What's the story? Hahu Kisra, they have a son in the Yudai. There was a Kesar of Romi that he hated the Jews. He looked for opportunities to annihilate and destroy the Jewish community. And says the Gemara, Amar lehu lechashivi de Malchuta. He said to the uh, Roman officials, Misha ala lo nima beraglo yiktaira veyichye. If someone has uh, an infection in his foot that's growing, would he cut off the leg, the limb, and live? Or would he just live with it and, and endanger his life? So he was referring to the Jewish community as being an infection in, in the Malchut of Romi, and he was saying, look, let's get rid of these people. It's not Kedai to keep them. It's too much trouble, and let's just uh, have the final uh, solution over here and, and do away with them. So Ketia was there. Amrulo, Yiktaina, everyone said, well, cut it off and live. Amalehu Ketia Bar Shalom, Ketia Bar Shalom was there, and he said, Chada Delo Yachlad First of all, you can't do that. It's not going to happen. Many have tried, it will never happen. The Nesach Yisrael, Lo Yishaker, Lo Yichazev, you can't finish the Jews. You may be able to kill some, but there will be Pleta Lebet Yisrael. Bichtiv, and he said, the Pasuk, well, you, don't, you didn't learn Tanakh 101, Kesar, Mr. Kesar. The Pasuk says, Beferush against what you say is suggesting, right? And they were very firm in that way. That they, they believed in, uh, in, the, in the Tanakh writing, so you could go with, with a drasha to them and they would, they would deal with it. Says the Gemara, he tells him, the Pasuk says, Ki uh, brasti etchem. Hashem says, I, will, I have spread you like like the four corners of the, the heavens. So says the Gemara, my Kamar, Kitya Bar Shalom is asking, the, the emperor, the Kesar, he says, what do you think the Pasuk is, is, is trying to say? It means that I have spread you to the four corners of the world? No. It doesn't say Be'ar Baruchot, that I have sent you to four corners. It says Ke'ar Baruchot, just like the, 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 the Ruchot, just like the, the winds, the sides of the world. You're going to be like that as well. 
כי כארבע רוחות השמיים פרסתי אתכם, מה כאמר? אילא מה דבדר תהון בדלת רוחות, if you want to suggest that the Pasuk is coming to say that I sent you to, to the four corners of the world, היי כארבע רוחות, לארבע רוחות מבעי, you should have said לארבע רוחות, I sent you, I spread you to the four corners of the world, it doesn't say that, it says כארבע רוחות, like the four corners, so says the Gemara, what does that mean? אלא כשם שאי אפשר לעולם בלא רוחות, you are like the רוחות, you're like the winds, just like no one can stop the winds and the world cannot stand without the winds, כך אי אפשר לעולם בלא ישראל. The world cannot stand without the Jews. They will always be there. They'll always be there. They, they may go through programs, holocausts, you know, destructions of, of, of first pandemic, dash second. You could go through a lot of difficulty. But they will be standing, some of them at the end. The Mar- everyone knows Mark Twain says, says the greatest nest and wonder of the world is the, the, the Jewish existence. Right? Goy says that. And it's such a beautiful, poetic way he says it. Right? It says the Jew stands and survives them all. And he says it doesn't make sense. The only way it makes sense is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, without you guys, the world can't stand. You're going to be there. So he said, well, you want to go against the Pasuk. You're not going to do that, Kesar, right? You can't finish. That's first. Secondly, they're going to call you names. You know how bad it is for your PR? If you kill a whole country, a whole community, for what? You're going to be known as a very negative, um, Kesar as a very negative personality, and therefore swallow your, your pride and, and you know, bite your, your lip and just tolerate them and live with them. Amale. So Kesar says, wow, you're saying good. Memar, shapir comrade, you are talking right. I didn't think about that. Says the Gemara, Mihu, but I'm sorry to, to remind you of one of the Roman um, rules and regulations of the empire. Back in the day, it used to be that presidents had kavod, right? If you had a debate with the emperor and you would win, you would get killed. If you would prove the emperor wrong, you would be killed, right? Is this. Um, the African prince, it would, it would be called, the, that he became a Ger Tzedek. He was a son of one of the actual kings in some tribe in Africa. Uh, he used to go around before Rosh Hashanah and talk about kingdom and kings. I'm not sure what happened exactly to him. But um, he, he would say how, how it is life with, with, with a king, with his father, a person that could kill without a trial, is a real king. And, uh, you know, you can't, you, you, you can't stand even taller next to him. He said, my father is actually very short. And one of the jobs of the kingdom is that you have to have two people praising the king all, the, all day long, from morning until the evening. That means you go out of the building, they look at the shaman and say, oh, you're greater than the, 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 the heavens and brighter than the sun. And da, da, da. It's a very hard job to have because you have to be extremely creative to come up with praises. You know, after two, three hours, you run out usually. And so sometimes the only person that's fit for the job is someone very tall. But there's another rule that he can't stand taller next to the king from him. And my father is very short. So they have to walk like bent the entire day with, with, uh, with him. So in the, in the Roman Empire, they had this thing. If you win over a, a, an argument or a debate or a conversation from the emperor, you're killed. So he says, you're right. Taka, I'm not going to kill the Jews. I accept. You're right. But you know what's going to happen to you now, right? And he risked his life knowing that because he, he, he stood for the Jews. So says the Gemara, Shadu le Kamonia. They sent him to, I mean, they, he was, he's, he was going to be brought out to be killed. Because how about Naktinle, when they are taking him there to be killed, Amra Lehahi Matronita, this Roman official woman, the top, top uh, um, personnel in the Roman um, Empire, the woman tells, why le le, le ilva, the Azla Belo Mixa? says, woe is to you, basically, that you are going, you, you, you are like a ship that's going without being able to give the taxes and you're being killed now, but you're not going to go to Olam Baba, you don't have Brit Milah. Right? You need, you need some sort of a tax to pay. 
You go, you, you're going to be killed. You don't have the breed of the Jews. You're being killed for the Jews. How is that going to work? So says the Gemara. Nafal Resha de Orlate, Kate, he managed as he was as, as he was going to be killed, he managed to give himself a Brit Bilas is the Gemara. Amar Yahvit Mirsi Khalfit Vavrit. He said, I do anything that it takes. I, I'll pay my taxes um, to go there. And and says the Gemara, Kikashadule, as they were throwing him to, to be burned at stake, Amar. He said, Kol Rabbi Akiva All of my nechasim should be given to, oh, he had assets, he was one of the Roman officials, he was a very rich man. So all of my nechasim should go to Rabbi Akiva and his, his Talmidim, his friends. Yatza Rabbi Akiva Bedarish, this is one of the ways that Rabbi Akiva became, um, became very rich. Rabbi Akiva started his life penniless. The Mara in, in, in Masechet Ketuvot, Daf Samech Gibal, explains the, the marriage and the first years of Rabbi Akiva's life, horrifying, um, you know, poverty. But at the end, the Gemara says, anyone that, that establishes and does the Torah, me'oli, so for the ka'ima me'osher. At the end, he will do it me'osher. And the Gemara learns it from Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva had six different ways that he became rich. This is one of them. The Nechassim of Ketiyah Bar Shalom that was given to him as a gift. And Rabbi Akiva came and said, well, he said, for Rabbi Akiva and for his friends. And, and he said, for Rabbi Akiva and for his friends means 50% for Rabbi Akiva, the other 50% divided to the friends. Okay, that's how it's said, and, and he brought a raya for it. Amar, oh, we are out of time. Out of time. We will continue this in the days to come.